The purpose of this problem is to demonstrate how to analyze reinforced beams or redesign beams or modified beams. And those modification comes as a result of changed service requirements. To this end, we consider an I-beam. The original cross-section is a wide flange W30 times 211. It's a 50 feet long beam, which is supposed to carry the load of 6,000 pounds per foot. We have to modify this beam or retrofit it in order to be able to carry the load that is double of the original service load. So in other words, 12,000 pounds per foot. And in order to do that, it was proposed to weld to the original beam two plates. They're shown here in a darker color. And our first question is the following. Is this reinforcement sufficient for doubling the load? Number one. Number two, if it is sufficient, how we should choose the welds or what is the minimum strength of the welds required for the modified beam? So let me summarize basic data for W30 to 11 beam. Everything comes from tables. Here you can see that the web is 30 plus inches. The flange is 15105 times 1.315 and the plates chosen for the reinforcement are exactly equal in size to the sizes of the flanges. So from tables, I can get the moment of inertia about the z-axis, the area, the weight. Please pay attention to this, 211. And in the tables, uh, we have 13094 given as the height of the web. So simply supported beam. So the load is Q plus W. Q refers to the service load. W is to the weight of the beam. And I'm not going to go through the details, but it should be pretty obvious by now that the shear force and bending moments could be calculated using this equation. So Q plus W L over two, that's the shear force uh, here. Here it's negative because uh, the shear force starts from positive, goes down. The moment is the maximum in the middle and these are the design values for the shear force and for the bending moment. Please pay attention. I'm preparing myself for doing all calculations using inches rather than feet. So therefore, I convert the value of the moment from pounds times feet to pounds times inches. So let us begin with analyzing the normal stress in the original beam. So that's my original beam. The standard formula. And here what we have. The moment comes from the previous slide. The moment of inertia comes from the table. And the maximum Y is very easy to calculate by looking at this picture. 
simply sum of these two distances. And uh, as a result, we obtain that the maximum stress in this beam is 37,000 KSI. This is pretty much in line with what the strength, the yield stress of uh, structural steels are. Right, so it's in a good ballpark. Now, let us see what's going on with the new beam or the retrofit beam. So now the beam looks like this, and I will start with analyzing the distributed load. I'll recall that the area is 62 inches square. Now we add to the area. What do we do? we add two plates and therefore I write down that the change in the area is equal to 2 times the base times the height and it's equal to 39.73 inch square. Now I can calculate the new load due to the weight and really if you look at the equation it simply says that the ratio of the new load to the old load is the same as the ratio of the new area to the old area and it is 1.64. Another way of saying it is that the additional plates increase the original area by 60 percent. So now, of course, we can calculate what's the new distributed load. So it's the service load that has been doubled from the original 6,000 plus 211, the original weight per unit length times 1.64. And this gives us 12.3 times 10 to the 3 pounds per cross-sectional parameters. All right. So I look at the new beam and I immediately conclude that Y max will be half of the web plus two times 1.315, right? The distance here. Y bar star, okay. I am preparing for some sheer calculations, right? But basically what I'm establishing is that the distance to the centroid of the additional plate is Y bar star, and it's simply half the web, plus the flange thickness, plus another half of the flange thickness. So it's a little bit less, of course, than Y max. Next, what I would like to do, I would like to calculate the additional moment of inertia, or simply put, that's the moment of inertia that is due to the additional plates. Two plates. Right, so I put two here. The moment of inertia BH cube over 12 for this plate plus 170195. That's the distance from the z axis to the center of the additional plate. And of course, that's the area of the additional plate. And we get that the moment of inertia uh, is increased by 11 and a half south. I want to pay your attention that the air increased by 64%, but the moment of inertia increased by more than a factor of two. So now we can calculate the new moment of inertia as the old one plus the additional 
which gives us one almost 22,000, right? And again, that's what I was referring to. 11, 5, verses 10, 3. Now we are going to do the stress analysis, the basic formula M as before is equal to Q plus W L square over eight. L of course stays 50 feet. Q plus W is now larger. And as a result, we obtain uh, this design moment. I put 12 here so that I immediately obtain a result that is in pounds times inch rather than pounds times feet. Y max has been calculated on the previous slide. IZ has been calculated on the previous slide. And as a result, we obtain that maximum stress is 37.4 KSI. So now let's take a look at what happens uh, with the normal stresses. The old stress was exactly 37 KSI. The new stress is 37.4. So it's kind of tight, right? And we really need to know what is the allowable stress. Uh, we cannot say that because this stress is less than this one, we are safe. No, we really want to make sure that this tiny change does not cause serious problems. So it's an important point. And here I assume that uh, this is acceptable. So 37.4 is below the allowable stress, and I will put it to analyze the wells. Let me redraw uh, the cross section. Now, yellow is A star. The reason it is A star is because if I look at the free body diagram, of the A star in 3D, here's what I see. I see the normal forces at X and X plus delta X. And then I see two shear flows in each weld, right? There is a weld on each side. And so now I can claim the following, that the force necessary to balance the normal or the red forces, delta F is equal to two Q delta X, because Q delta X is the force transmitted by each weld. Of course, the shear flow is delta F over delta X, so equal to two Q. Now I can use the generic formula for the shear flow and connect it with this equation to obtain the result of Q equal to one half V capital Q over IZ. So let us finish the calculation. Here I show the reinforced cross-section. That's the formula from the previous slide for the shear flow in the weld. Now to get the numbers, I recall from previous slides that the centroid of the yellow area, A star, is given by this number so that I can calculate the first moment of A star with the first moment of A star, I can proceed and recall IZ. The shear force is given by the expression that we have seen before. And finally, if we put it all together, 
we obtain that the shear flow in the weld is given by roughly 2400 pounds per inch and that should be regarded as the minimum uh, strength for the shear flow for the beam to be viable.